Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. Thanks uh, for hanging out for me. Uh, Vince said that I'm the closer, I guess, on the program. I'm gonna follow in the, um, you know, the uh, Diamond Dollars case competition rules. And I know I, that means I can't be um, uh, Wade Davis, but that's okay, because I don't want to be Eraldis Chapman. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about here is unintended consequences of rising strikeout rates. I was going to call this um, unintended consequences of the strikeout scourge. The last few years Rob Nyer has been here, I was worried there might be some sort of intellectual property thing. Okay, what got me interested in this topic is this picture right here. This is August 2nd, 2014, ninth inning of a game between the Diamondbacks and the Pirates with the Pirates up five to one. One out, runners on second and third. Randall Delgado drilled Andrew McCutcheon in the back with a 96 mile an hour four seamer. The reason for this hit by pitch, it was pretty clear, was retaliation from the day before in another game between the Pirates and the Diamondbacks. Pirates leading this one, also in the ninth inning, by a score of nine to four. Ernesto Frieri hit Paul Goldschmidt in the hand with a pitch, breaking a bone and ending Goldschmidt's season. So this was pretty clearly retaliation. Now, full disclosure, I'm kind of an anti-hit-by-pitch guy. If I had a baseball and threw it at one of you from here at 96 miles an hour, not that I could, uh, it would be battery, and I don't think it should occur in the, um, you know, here, and so I wasn't happy to see it on the diamond. And so with kind of righteous indignation, I went and I looked up to see what an outrage this was given how much progress we've made as a sport since the days of Sal Magley and Bob Gibson and Don Drysdale hitting lots of guys. And this is what I found. This is a table of plate appearances per hit batter. So the smaller the number, the more frequently batters are being hit. And so what I did is I flipped the scale around so the, to make the graph look the way you'd expect it. Big numbers on that graph, or big slopes on that graph, is when there's a lot of batters being hit, the troughs are when very few are. And far from being an era where we've become more civilized with hit by pitches, we're kind of living in the golden era of batters getting hit by pitch. In 2015, there was one hit batter per every 115 plate appearances. That's the 13th highest rate in Major League history. Of the 13 highest rates in Major League history, all but three have occurred since 2000. Batters are getting hit more than ever before. And this is despite the fact, and I want to get the great man's quote right, um, spokesman for the sport and sort of you know mascot for this conference, Goose Gossage said the other day, he said, quote, you can't pitch inside anymore. Well, I looked over Goots Gossage's career. Goots Gossage hit a batter once every 160 plate appearances. Last year, the average major league pitcher hit players once in every 115 plate appearances. Batters are getting hit currently 39% more than Gossage hit them in his era. So, you know, shocking as it may seem, it seems that, um, you know, in another eyes, pretty well reasoned soliloquy of Gossage's. He got that one exactly wrong. You can pitch inside. So this got me thinking, uh, you know, why is it? Why are so many batters getting hit? And so I used the time-honored research principle of asking a lot of people smarter than me who I ran into. Some of them were at this conference. What could be going on? And it wound up chasing a lot of dead ends until someone suggested to me, well, why don't you look at strikeouts and how strikeouts might be affecting pitch locations? Okay, and this is a graph that's probably familiar to everybody here. This is strikeouts and walks as a percentage of plate appearances since 1950. 1950 being the last year in Major League history in which there were more walks than strikeouts. And what you can see, that black line, is that strikeouts have steadily increased from less than 10% of plate appearances back then to nearly 21% last year, which was the eighth consecutive year that we had all-time high uh, strikeout frequency. I, I think everyone's well aware of this. We've heard a lot about it. What I think has been less well publicized, though, is that red line. Walks have been declining, and in fact, the last two seasons have seen batters walked at the lowest pace since 1968, the year of the pitcher, and before that, you have to go back to the end of the dead ball era to see walks occurring so infrequently. So strikeouts up, walks down. It seemed to me that that would suggest that, among other things, pitchers are getting ahead of the count more with the, uh, 
against batters and that that could have other consequences. So what I did is I looked at the count when a plate appearance ended. And plate appearance ending is just whatever offensive event ends it. So if a batter hits a single on a two and one count, plate appearance ended with the batter ahead in the count. If a batter pops up on the first pitch of an at bat, then that plate appearance ended with the count even. If he strikes out on 0 and 2, then the plate appearance ended with the pitcher ahead in the count. And what you can see here is that with the count even, pretty steadily, uh, plate appearances have ended with about 30 to 30, it ended with an even count about 33 to 36 percent of the time. With strikeouts rising, unsurprisingly, the batter has been ahead in the count less frequently, from a high of about 38 percent to almost exactly 33 percent in each of the last two years. The pitcher being ahead in the count, again somewhat unsurprisingly, has been rising steadily. But what I think is worth noting here is you see right at the end there, the last two years, where the red line is above the black line, we can say with almost 100% certainty, and the reason why I qualified, the only reason I qualified is because we don't have pitch data going back far enough, but we can say with almost 100% certainty, the last two years were the first two in Major League history in which more plate appearances ended with the batter behind the count than with the pitch, than with uh, the batter ahead. So we're seeing with, at, let's say, the first time in history, more plate appearances are ending on 0 and 1, 0 and 2, and 1 and 2, then 1 and 0, 2 and 0, 3 and 0, 2 and 1, 3 and 1, and 3 and 2 combined. Unprecedented amounts of uh, pitchers' counts coming into play. So what does that mean? I took as an example Chris Sale uh, because he was one of the co-league leaders and hit batters last year. And everything that I've shown you thus far is from baseball reference, which is the absolutely invaluable uh, resource for research. This comes from Baseball Savant. This is a zone map of Sale pitching to right-handed batters when he's behind in the count. So imagine that batter standing toward the left side of that rectangle. And what I what you could do if you took the time to add it all up, but I did. If you look at the five leftmost zones there, the ones closest to where the batter would be, Sale pitches to those five zones, the most inside zones, about 31% of the time when he's behind in the count. When he's behind, he's trying to throw a strike. By contrast, when he's ahead in the count, those five leftmost zones, the ones closest to the batter, they comprise 38% of his pitches. So the difference from being behind in the count, being ahead in the count, for Sale, who, granted, is an outstanding pitcher, is the difference between coming inside 31% of the time and coming inside 38% of the time. Obviously, if you're going to be coming inside and you miss, it can have consequences that don't occur when you're aiming towards the center of the plate. Now, again, you, the other thing you'll get if you, learn, if you add up all the numbers here is that Sale is ahead of the count way more than he's behind. But this holds true with pitchers in general. What I looked at was his teammates on the White Sox last year. And when White Sox pitchers were behind in the count, and this is to all batters, uh, left and right handed, this heat map also from Baseball Savant, you can see when White Sox pitchers are behind the count, the heat map is a fairly regularly shaped blob with the hottest areas right in the center of the strike zone. Again, when a pitcher's behind in the count, they're going to throw towards the center of the zone. When White Sox pitchers were ahead in the count, that blob becomes much more diffuse. There aren't as well-defined hot zones. And you can see it extends well to the left, well to the right, and well below the strike zone. And that makes sense. When a pitcher is ahead in the count, they're going to throw something along the margins of the strike zone, the periphery of the strike zone, in order to maybe get the batter to chase, to get the batter to, to set the batter up for the next pitch. But in any case, in an area where it's going to be harder for the batter to hit, but also harder if the pitcher misses the pitch to keep the ball in the strike zone. I want you to think of that rightmost map as I go through the next chart. Kind of think about when a pitcher's ahead in the count, they're throwing pitches, a lot of them inside, outside, and low. So what I wanted to do was look and see whether this difference in the pitching strategy as well as the hitting strategy, but mostly the pitching strategy, results in changes in outcomes when batters are at the plate. So what I looked at is, for various offensive events, the number of plate appearances per event. So again, this, this is plate appearances per event, so a smaller number means that something happens more frequently. So I looked at various events and tried to figure out whether there's a difference 
in the frequency of the event when the pitcher's ahead in the count versus when the batter's ahead in the count. And for those of you who speak geek, this was a n minus one chi squared with a uh, two-tailed test, and I look for a p of less than 0.05. All right, first one, hits. Excuse me. Very unsurprisingly, uh, when the pitcher's ahead in the count, hit occurs every five plate appearances. It's every 4.5 when the batter's ahead. That is a statistically significant difference. Batters get fewer hits when the pitcher's ahead in the count than when the batter's ahead in the count. Again, this is not surprising. This kind of underlies the whole strikeouts or hurting offense argument. When you break down the types of hits, though, what you see is that there's a statistically significant decrease in extra base hits. Doubles, triples, and home runs are all less frequent when the pitcher's ahead in the count, when the plate appearance ends with the pitcher ahead in the count, than when the batter's ahead in the count. And that makes sense both from the batter's point of view, because the batter might be, you know, chasing pitches they wouldn't otherwise, they may be shortening their swing, be being more defensive, and also from the pitcher's perspective, because as we saw, they're targeting areas of zone that are harder to hit than the middle of the plate when the batter's ahead. The one offensive hit that isn't changed is the single, and I think you can probably make a pretty good argument that the reason why there's no difference in singles is that some hits that otherwise might have been driven further for an extra base hit due to a combination of both the way the batter swings and where the pitch is thrown, uh, those become singles instead of doubles, triples, or home runs. Okay, base running. Uh, stolen base attempts are not affected by the count. However, stolen base success is. And I think this kind of buttresses well with what Lindsay was saying about suboptimal use of stolen base strategies. With pitchers increasingly ahead in the count, Base runners are more successful with stolen bases. Again, think of that White Sox heat map. You've got a lot of pitches out here, a lot of pitches here, a lot of pitches low in the zone. Those are all more difficult for the catcher to get to rather than the ones in the strike zone. That slows down the catcher pop time, increases the likelihood that a base runner is going to be able to steal. Sacrifice uh, bunts are happen more frequently when the pitcher's ahead than when the pitcher's behind. Uh, I read nothing into that other than the simple fact that the most common count for bunts is 0-0. The second most common count is 0-1. Uh, I don't think there's anything beyond that. Sacrifice flies, though, I think it is worth noting, are less uh, frequent when the pitcher's ahead, and I think for a lot of the same reasons that extra base hits are. Combination of the way the batter swings and the location of the pitch at which he swings results in fewer flies hit far enough to score a runner from third. Come on. There we go. Uh, grounded into play, reached on error. Neither of those are really affected by the count. But this gets to what I think is the two most interesting findings of my study, and that's hit by pitches and wild pitches. Again, think of that White Sox heat map when the pitcher's ahead in the count. A lot of pitches outside and low that if the pitcher misses by a few inches, that might get past the catcher. A lot of pitches inside that if the pitcher misses by a few inches, it might hit the batter. Overall, both hit by pitches and wild pitches are about three times more likely to occur when the pitcher's ahead in the count than when the batter's ahead in the count. And it, just to kind of, kind of stay, take a step back from where we've gone, I've shown that increased strikeouts mean increasing uh, pitchers counts, increasingly pitchers are ahead in the count, and that those, uh, the difference in where the pitcher pitches when he's ahead in the count results in these different outcomes. Okay, and then finally, box and pickoffs, they hardly ever occur and they're not really affected by anything here anyway. So all the data I just showed you is from the 2015 season, and it shows that certain events are either statistically significantly more likely or statistically significantly less likely to occur when the pitcher's ahead in the count. If we can generalize these results, the conclusion would be that as we look through the past several years when strikeouts have been uh, growing, each of these types of events should be affected similarly. So that's what I did next. First chart here looks at strikeouts versus total hits, extra base hits. What I looked at is the rate per plate appearance. I normalized it to have 1992 be my base year. I was not cherry picking data, I just picked 92 because that was the last year that fewer than 15% of plate appearances end in strikeouts. And what you can see here, the yellow line, strikeouts are up about 40%. You'll hear me say this several times. The other uh, things I tried to track here 
get a little bit confounded by the PED era. If you just look at 2000, from 2006 forward, the institution of testing, you see strikeouts rising, hits declining, home runs declining, doubles declining, triples declining, a little bit of a blip in home runs last year, but certainly not enough for me to say that, uh, you know, that the trend has been reversed. I think that when pundits and other people following the sport talk about strikeouts reducing offense, this is what they're talking about. Increased strikeouts resulting in fewer hits, fewer, excuse me, fewer extra base hits. Okay, sacrifice flies. What the data would suggest is that they'd be down. In fact, they are. This shows a 40% increase in sacrifice flies, I'm sorry, in strikeouts per plate appearance compared to an 8% decrease in sacrifice flies per plate appearance that occur with a runner on third and less than two out. So again, sort of consistent with what the intuition would be that when you're trying to protect the plate or when the pitcher's throwing those tougher pitches, it's hard to hit the ball far enough to score a runner from third. Not really an exciting result, I think, but not one that's been publicized as much as the general decline in offense. This one, I think, is probably the most counterintuitive result, the increase in wild pitches, for this reason. Like I said, we're seeing walks occur at the lowest rate since the year of the pitcher. That would imply the pitchers have really good control. We're seeing unprecedented uh, rates of batters striking out. That would also imply the pitchers have really good control. And yet what we're seeing here is that since 92, strikeouts are up 40% and uh, wild pitches are up 23%. If you just look at the last 10 years, if you take 2005 as the base year, since then there's been a 24% increase in strikeouts, a 6% decrease in walks, Yet wild pitches, and I'm using wild pitches per plate appearance with a man on base, in that period are up 29%. Clearly, what's driving wild pitches is not the improved control that's implied by more strikeouts and fewer walks. It's by the count, which is resulting, which is a consequence of that improved control, resulting in pitcher, pitchers targeting parts of the zone where a wild pitch is more likely to occur. Whoops. And then hit batters, the thing that sort of got me interested in this in the first place, they're down a little bit from around 2,000, but generally these are kind of track strikeouts. Strikeouts up about 40%, hit batters up about 40%. Again, if you're thinking that pitchers have better control, you wouldn't expect them to be hitting more batters, but I think the conclusion here, and I'm pretty comfortable saying that this is what's the case, is that because of increased pitchers' counts, pitchers targeting the inside part of the zone, that's what's hitting batters. It's not because pitchers have poor control. So just really quickly going back to what got me going on this, the, the August 2nd game when uh, Delgado drilled Andrew McCutcheon. Um, the day before, as I said, Ernesto Frieri hit uh, Goldschmidt and broke his hand. That was on a 1-0 count. And you think, okay, pitcher's ahead in the count. Maybe that's what's going on. But anybody here an Angels fan? Okay. You probably remember 2014. This was the no idea where the ball is going phase of Frieri's career. This is his uh, Brooks baseball uh, zone map for, uh, during his time as a pirate. What you can see is, yeah, maybe he was trying to get something on the inside part of the zone, but more likely he was just trying to throw one over the plate, and he had a lot of problems with that. Now, Delgado, my contention was that he had intentionally hit McCutcheon. Two pieces of evidence would support that. The first one being the hit batter occurred on a 2-0 and o count, which I've shown is three times less likely to result in a hit batter than one when the uh, pitcher's ahead in the count. The other one is that this zone map shows Delgado against right-handed batters in 2014. He pitched down and away to righties. This is from a catcher's point of view. For him to come up and in, and that happened to be the second pitch in that bat that was up and in, he was trying to hit him. So in a way, I, I, I launched on this uh, project to try to explain what happened back in 2014, and the answer I found doesn't really successfully uh, explain this particular date, but I think it does explain some bigger trends that are going on in baseball. And those would be, first of all, more strikeouts means that pitchers are increasingly ahead in the count, and when pitchers are ahead in the count, they change their strategy as to where they're trying to throw the ball. Instead of focusing on the middle of the plate, they're focusing on the margins of the zone, and when you focus on the margins of the zone and you miss, you can have consequences that you don't have when the pitch is targeted more to the center of the zone and they miss. 
And those consequences from pitchers being ahead of the count more are fewer sacrificed flies, more wild pitches, and more hit batters. And I think it's pretty apparent that if, you know, if you're watching a game and you're a fan of a team, that you get upset when your batter's not able to drive a runner in from third with less than two outs. You get upset if your pitcher throws one to the backstop with a runner on base. And you get upset if your star player gets hit by a pitch. All those things are apparent. What I think is less apparent, and what I hope I've uh, demonstrated today, is the degree to which all three of those events, as well as the decline in scoring that everyone's talked about, can be tied to an increase in strikeouts. Okay, thank you, and I can take any questions. The question was, did I find anything special about the 0-2 count? I will admit to you I didn't break them down to that degree. Um, obviously, 0-2 counts, the, the next event is a strikeout more than it is for any other count other than 1 and 2. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that would be that would be a worthwhile follow-up to see if, if we see even more of a spike in these events when, they're, when it's 0-2. Right. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I didn't. The, the question was, did I look into why pitchers? are getting ahead of the count in the first place. I didn't look into that specifically, but I think it can be tied to everything that we read about why strikeouts are up. A little bit of it's patience, but you know, all the stuff about every bullpen's got six arms that come in and can throw 95, that, you know, I seem to remember the great sage Gossage saying that there's not enough shame in strikeouts. Um, all the things that, that would go into strikeouts, I think, lead to the counts progressing the way that they have. Yeah, that's a good question. Is there data that would, that would look at what happens when a pitch is wild when there's nobody on? Um, that, I would assume that one could kind of infer that stuff from pitch FX data. What my data source was baseball reference, and so I don't have that. But that would, that would seem to be logical if you, you know, go, going to the, the prior question. You start off a leadoff hitter 0-2, why not see if he'll chase one way outside? The catcher might not even try for it. Yeah, that's, I think that's good. Yeah, that, that's a, I, the, the whole, I, I will admit to being a little bit glib at, at, you know, sort of attributing PEDs to a lot of these things. I, you know, Joe Sheehan says it's all about contact rate, it's nothing else. Yeah, this, this chart is the one you're referring to. Well, nope, I'm not up there. I, I can see it here. Yeah, um, the, there we are. Yeah, that, that the, the big, the, the outlier years there were, 1999, 2000, which were also, you know, that was the summer after, that was the year after the summer of love and long ball, but there were a bunch of home runs then. I think there's probably some truth to that. One of the, one of the theories that, this was Brian Bannister suggested to me, this was in my asking smarter people why this might be happening. His theory was that during the PED era, there were fewer hit batters, which actually was not the case. But he said he didn't want to pitch inside against right-handed pull hitters in the PED era because he figured they'd yank him over the fence. If you're taking a part, away part of the zone, then that would suggest that you're going to be disadvantaged in terms of count.
Yeah, yeah. The, whether, the question is whether I'm saying that hit batsmen is sort of like a consequence of rising strikeout rates than a phenomenon on their own. Mike Farron, who was here earlier, suggested to me that maybe the increase in hit batsmen could, become, could be a consequence of more players coming to the majors from colleges. Because colleges use hit batsmen as, you know, as an offensive weapon. I heard a college coach saying that one of the things he needed to teach his freshmen was how to wear a pitch you know, how to get hit. Um, when I looked into that, though, the two things I found, one is that there's not a lot more kids coming up from college now than there were in the past. Second, two of the most frequently hit batters uh, are Starling Marte and Shin Su Chu, neither of whom went to an American college. But the third thing is hit bat, batter rates are up for everybody, though college kids and non-college kids. So that made me think that, you know, it's, it wasn't a consequence of that. It could be a consequence of pitchers maybe pitching inside more, though I don't know that, you know, the, the data, you know, we've got a limited data set for that, but it would seem to me that this, given the difference in those zone maps, that that would be the strongest explanation, the difference in counts. Yeah, and like I say, the, his, his data are flawed. You can, you can look on this chart where, like I said, he hit a batter every 160 plate appearances. Look on the graph where the 160 is. That's nowhere near the rate that uh, players are getting hit now. Well, maybe not because you can't go inside the house. Yeah, and he very well may be correct about that. Yeah, that, that could have a role. That's been in the game for a while. Um, but, yeah, that, that would have, that, that could have some role. Um, again, though, I think what, I've, what the data here, or the pictures more than data would suggest, is that even if they're wearing more armor, they may be, you know, le more, more willing to stand in against an inside pitch, but the increase in strikeouts in and of itself is resulting in more of those inside pitches in the first place. Oh, the que if the question is, if we're, if we're moving into the reason for higher strikeouts, you know, we could, we could have like back-to-back -back sessions on that. I mean, certainly, yeah, the way that, that players are swinging, the way that they're incentivized, um, you know, the, I mean, there's a lot of things, a lot of things going on with, with hitters versus where they were just 10 years ago. A lot of things going on with pitchers versus where they were just 10 years ago that would, that would suggest you know, what's going on with strikeouts. But I tried to, you know, take that out of this, just sort of take it as a given rather than look for that as a cause. Yeah. It was, it, yeah, the question is, is the rationale for more sack flies the same as for wild pitch and hit batters? Partly, I said that's kind of more related to why there are fewer extra base hits. Part of it is because, I mean, with a, with a wild pitch and a hit batter, obviously the batter's not making contact. And with a sack fly, they are. And to the degree to which the pitches with which they're making contact are in tougher locations to hit, that makes it harder to drive the ball in. But there's also certainly a component of that that is the batter swinging differently probably when he's, say, 0-2 versus when he's ahead in the count. So it would be, what I said, probably more, the analog there would be more the decline in extra base hits. Yeah, back there. Yeah, the que I'm glad you asked that. Yeah, the question is, fewer men on base, fewer sacrifice flies. When I first did this, I used my denominator for everything with just plate appearances. And I said, yeah, there's fewer sack flies per plate appearance. They're all, I don't know, they're like 14% less. And there are more strikeouts per plate appearance. I said, wait a minute. 
What I really need to look at is plate appearances. And you know, thank God for baseball reference. You can get this stuff so easily. What I really need to look at is plate appearances with a runner on third and zero or one out. So that's what I used as my denominator there. So it's all on equal footing. Okay. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you for being not a Chapman. <laughs>